<laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Slippery People. I'm Liliana Velasquez, and this evening, or daytime, I don't know what time it is, actually, uh, my guest is Terry Saunders, new to the Berlin scene, and I'm very excited to have him here. Welcome. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Really exciting. Huh? Unexpected. You know, this is the way I look. This is the way I roll. This is now what happens to me. That's on, a, it. on a Saturday, rainy Saturday, I just come on and camera. get interviewed. <laughs> so, Jerry, um, I don't know if you follow our YouTube channel, which is Wave Dots. We're on the Wave Dots YouTube channel, and our series is called Slippery People. It's about talented artists who have passed through Sunday slips, whether oh. they're musicians, poets, or hmm, comics. I mean, I've, I've definitely slipped through. <laughs> <laughs> you slipped through this. <laughs> um, so, we basically always ask the same three questions to every single artist, and you are welcome to ask me questions as well. I enjoy it if people interview me also. You're very needy like that. I like you know it. what? Yeah. I'm needier than people think. Wow. Because it's pretty people obvious. People think you're needy. <laughs> I'm demanding more than I'm needy. I'm very needy. Yeah, you're needy. I'm yeah, demanding. I need the attention now. <laughs> you're talking. I don't like it. I want just, Aww, could we get the zoom womp, in on me? Womp, womp. Start your own YouTube channel. Fine. Fine. <laughs> so my first question for you is, um, do you remember, which I'm sure you do because it was very recent, do you remember your first time at Sunday Slips? Or? <laughs> well, the first time at Sunday Slips was a big one for me because it was not only my first time at Sunday Slips, which is a lovely gig, but it was my first stand-up gig of any description in about 10 years. Yeah. So I was a little scared because I'd forgotten how to do it. And, I know. Yeah. I was kind of pushing you. You were, I wouldn't even say kind of pushing me. You were, you were like, you were dragging me onto the stage. <laughs> be like, come on, do this again, do this again. You can do it. <laughs> but it was good. I, rem I, well, I remembered enjoying the gig and then the next morning waking up feeling very disappointed. Because you heard your gig? Because what I, I just, I just that feeling of going, it went good. For someone who hasn't done a performance for 10 years, it went well. Yeah. But for my brain of being very used to doing comedy a long time ago, it was just like going, well, that wasn't good it, enough. It's a muscle. I must, I, I messed up a word. I did a, I blanked a line. I mean, I, I think I just totally blanked one joke, which never used to happen. So I was, well, I mean, it's a muscle. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's a very flabby, atrophied muscle that I thought had died. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm witty, but what happened to my jokes? Yeah, what was it? What's going on? Where's, where's the technique and the craft? I'd forgotten how to use a microphone. Did put, you forget how to use a microphone? I forgot how to put it back in the stand. Because I, I used to be, so I, I used to pride myself on having the best mic technique back in the day. Is that so? And I'd always put the mic back in the stand with a good kind of couple of minutes left. So I do the last couple of jokes, stood there so that I, so that if I get an unexpected round of applause, I can just muck off and <laughs> be like, I'm done. <laughs> but no, this time I, I remember holding the mic and then finished and I was like, oh God, I'm just holding here like an idiot because I've forgotten. Well, hand it over. What do I do? Yeah, I'm yeah, hand it the over. microphone, I'm really sorry. Oh. <laughs> I used to be good at this. <laughs> I don't even remember that happening. I, I enjoyed it. I was so happy that you were back on stage. I mean, we've been talking for a while and, and yeah. conversation-wise, I realized how witty you are and I see your cartoons. Yeah, I have a dry wit. I have a... A dry wit. Very... Is it dry? I think it's dry. Hmm. Is it like a martini? It's like a, more like a towel. <laughs> more like a towel? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was good because, yeah, I'd been, I'd been playing with the idea of doing comedy again for a long time, and I don't think I'd have done it without you. Oh, Aww. thanks for insulting me on Hinge. I, well, look, look, should we get this story on record then? I didn't insult you on yes, Hinge. Yes, you did. No, you misread my message. So Okay, Hinge, for the people who don't live in this part of the world or who don't have this app, Hinge is a dating app that I used extremely briefly for maybe three dates, which I made a lot of comedy routines about. Uh, not this one, because <laughs> I actually enjoyed this one. Um, <laughs> yeah. But... Yeah. I'm in a photograph in a gorgeous latex dress by Lupe, and I'm performing on stage. I have a microphone in the picture, mm -hmm. and I get a comment below my photo. And the comment says, hi, I'm an ex-comedian. No, there no. was no I. Hi, ex-comedian. Into latex. Latex lover. Ex-comedian, latex lover here. I'm, I'm sure I said something like here, as in I'm saying, well, hey, I've seen your picture. You seem to be a comedian and you're into latex. I responded, Hi. classic Latina. Yeah, feisty. Who the fuck are you calling an ex-comedian, bitch? I just got off stage. 
I was like, oh. <laughs> and then you being Latina, I was very British. You went, oh, I'm terribly sorry. I've, <laughs> I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> no, 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 I'm so sorry. <laughs> Think of what I meant you, right? Do you have a matter? <laughs> I was a former comedian and I sometimes wear latex and you seem to be a current comedian and I'm terribly sorry that I've made this mistake. Please forgive me. I will leave now. <laughs> and I laughed so hard at home alone that I was like, let's go have dinner at Crazy Bastard Sauce right now. And we did. Didn't we have a? Didn't we have dinner like within hours? Yeah. 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 And we we became friends, which is great. I was like, oh well, I don't date comics, but now I'm dating a comic. Damn it! Wait a minute. But <sighs> that's... my own rules. Yeah. Oh, I've, I've never realized because that story ends with us just getting we, the the date. It's like the date didn't go well. The date went well. We had fun, but uh, the, it didn't go further. Other than oh. friendship, which is pretty great. I mean, friendship's good. Yeah. I mean. It's fine. I got you back on stage. We have a show together now. We do. We're going to Vienna. We're going to Vienna. I mean, you're getting more access to me than people are like, what? <laughs> no, it's good. No, I'm happy. No, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. So we're doing, uh, so now we're doing... Time to Shine. Time to Shine. Time to Shine. A show about latex and laughter. Because we are... Because <laughs> um, we are both people who wear latex. We are both. And now we are both people who do comedy again. Yeah. So we decided to join forces and do this night, Time to Shine, mm -hmm. which you rather threw on me with nine days' notice. Hi, I'm Liliana Velasquez when I want something. <laughs> so I should say, as a bit of background for me, so I used to be a comedian in Britain for like 10 years, about 10 years ago. I haven't done it for a long time. I never spoke about kink on stage before. It was always a very different part of my life. And then, now I'm in Berlin, I'm living my new life, I'm being open about kink, I'm kind of being me. And so then we did this gig, and I did the whole gig, wearing a cover in, covered in like a latex cat suit with my name on, which is a funny story. And then, now... And I'm, I was going to wear a full latex outfit too, but I got my period and I just couldn't put the latex pants on. I just couldn't. I just couldn't. I can't imagine what it must be like to get a period when it comes to latex. I can make you bleed. I mean, I know I can bleed. I can bleed. It's, it's more the swelling. <laughs> yeah, no, there's so many things about it. Pains that are, a a like, it's not only, it's your tits hurt, your back hurts, your loins hurt. And you're just like, hey, it's a wonderful day. Let's do this. Yeah, let's just pretend everything's fine. Let's just pretend I'm not dying inside. I have that in a kind of mental capacity. <laughs> I just have days where I'm Your like, brain I'm, has a period. I'm good. My brain is, yeah, actually. <laughs> That would make sense. About once a month, I'm really just quite sad. They say men have like a like a rhythm that also has PMS. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, mine is regular. Well, you're British. And I'm British, so you can't tell from the. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it's cultural or. Yes. Is he happy? Mm, yeah, I'm fine. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, everything's all right.
So how many years did you go into comedy? Uh, like, when did you start? So I started, I was, I moved to London when I was 20. From where? From Cheltenham, which is a small town Don't near Bristol it. in Britain. And I wanted to be a writer more than anything. And I found myself writing for a sketch show that was going to the Edinburgh Comedy Festival. And that was about 2003. And then I went to do this and then someone dropped out and I ended up being in the sketch show. And I can safely say it was one of the worst sketch shows that's ever been at the Edinburgh Festival. It was <laughs> terrible. Like it was, we ended on a song that was about AIDS or something. It was like, it was, it was of its time, but also terrible during its time. Okay. <laughs> and then whilst I was at the Edinburgh Festival, I started watching, I'd never really been seen stand up properly apart from on telly. So I went to see some stand up comedians and I just had that moment of going, I want to do that. And then I went back to London and I booked a stand-up gig in a venue called Downstairs at the King's Head in Crouch End. Downstairs at the? The King's Head, which is where a lot of comedians and got Crouch their End? stuff. In Crouch End, which is oh. very different to Crouch End. Crouch End is posh people, Crouch End no, is... No, I heard Crack's Den. Crack's Den. Yeah, that's 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 a good place to do. Not so much good for comedy. Like a comedy yeah, yeah. club. You know, it's more the kind of after hours <laughs> kind of night. And then, yeah, so then I did it for... I did, so then I did four Edinburgh shows on my own, I think. You did four Edinburgh shows on your own, the yeah. full run, 30 days, yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah. what were the names of your shows? So the first, 2005, I did Romantic Comedy, which was the only time I mentioned fetish, because I talked about going to a fetish club for the first time, and in the poster I had PVC trousers on, so I was like, I'm going to be the fetish PVC, comedian. PVC, not noticed. latex. I was 25, I couldn't afford latex then. And I had a story in it about going to a fetish club for the first time, but not having the right outfit, and then, then making me take my t-shirt off, that was humiliating. They made you take your shirt off? Yeah. But left your PVC pants on? And, and I had brown PVC trousers, if you can imagine, like fake leather brown. Mm. I think they were from CNA, and I think they were women. Okay, well, you but were trying. Was, I was trying. Part, you know, I was that's trying. how we start. We start with something. I, yeah, my first, like, kinky outfit was also not... Well, I remember getting, I remember getting a, a latex top from eBay that was that weird molded latex that it, it, it's... Like, it had creases in it where it folded, and it smelled like a kind of car engine. And oh, I like you, that. Yeah, but you put it on and it was just like, oh, I look like I'm a loaf of bread that's been wrapped up. It wasn't... Was it beige? No, it was just grey-black. Like, you could never... Shine, it would never catch a shine and it would just mm. keep these creases in was it. it. Was it used? I can't remember. Probably. It was because eBay Because sometimes that day. happens when latex yeah. is exposed to heat or light too long. And, yeah, and then and it, it was, just gets this weird grey that will never shine again. And it was so cheap. You know that thing where yeah. someone's just going, this is good. But that was my first show. So I talked about Kink in that show. Then my second show, I started to move into kind of storytelling. That's what I mainly do is tell these kind of stories that are half about me, but they can just be narrative things. And an ex-girlfriend at the time told me this thing about a friend of hers who started speaking only in lyrics of a certain band. And I was like, that's an idea. So I did the show. very obsessive, though. I know. So I did this show called Pulp Boy, which is about a boy called Trevor, I think his name was. No, Nathan. And he only spoke in pulp lyrics. Have you know the band Pulp? Do you know Pulp? Oh, okay. No, no. I don't. They but I was like, Pulp people. Fiction? He only spoke in Pulp Fiction? No, it's just like it's a British band, Common People, all the rest of it. And so I just did a whole show where he only spoke in pulp lyrics. That Do you was... remember anything from that show? Can you give me one example? No. No, because that was... 15 years ago. No, I can't. Oh, that's, I've, I've ruined it. <laughs> in fact, I do remember doing, I remember being in Belfast doing a BBC radio interview. Like, because for a while I was kind of nearly famous and I was doing a BBC radio for interview. For a while, I was kind of nearly, nearly once, famous. Just, I nearly made it. I was on telly once and I was a celebrity doing, doing poker. But it was the only time I was what on telly. What is telly? Hmm? Telly? Telly, TV, oh, television. television, television, darling. I thought it was a children's television no, show. No, I was on, I was on, on, I was on television. The, my one time I ever appeared on television, I was billed as a celebrity playing poker. Uh, oh. And I was like, well, how, how can I be a celebrity? This wow, is one, we have a celebrity but here How can today. I be a celebrity? This is the only time I've been on telly. It doesn't, <laughs> it's just like, it's the cat eating itself. But um, I love it. No, I remember being on this radio thing and, they, and this is when I was doing this show. They said, oh, can you maybe give us a little bit that you can remember? And I couldn't remember then when I was doing it. So 15 years on, forget about it. Um, <laughs> But then what, 2007, I did a show called Miss Connections, which was all oh, about... Oh, I love that name. Which was all about a woman who was obsessed with the Miss Connection adverts that yeah, you Yeah, I remember get. these yeah, adverts. Yeah. They were like, saw you on the train. Yes. You had a blue jacket. We smiled. Yes, exactly that. So she was so obsessed, the character in the story, she wanted to be in a Miss Connections advert. 
so bad. So she just kept taking the train? She kept taking the train, but she kept wearing really kooky outfits. <laughs> so just like, someone would be like, oh, I saw you with pencil crayons in your hair. <laughs> um, you had the dress from New York at the, yeah. at the <laughs> awards. Yeah. And by that point, I was starting to do like animations and like pre make, animate the whole show and mm -hmm. have these kind of stories in the background animating whilst I was doing it. And then, yeah, so that my comedy became that. Love it. Yeah. So that was the fourth show. Yeah, what else I did? I did one called Six and a Half Loves. How many did I do? I can't remember. And that was a big story about lots of people who were trying to find the perfect partner, but nobody could because my shows are also really effing tragic. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like happy endings. Don't like happy endings. <laughs> no, because I'm I big. like to keep it real. <laughs> yeah, I like people to walk away feeling, oh, I've got a weird feeling from that comedy show. I feel kind of depressed. You think I'm going to fight with my partner? <laughs> yeah. That's good. That <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> but then, what about you? So you've done some full-length shows. Yeah. So I, mean, I saw your one, uh, Align. Align, yeah, yeah. Align, which is all about staying single. I don't even follow my own advice. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. It's a, it's a positive show about staying single. Align, uh, in German. Well, the show's in English, but the title's in German, because I just love the way that they say... Align. Align. Which du to bist me, Align. No, I always... The first time I heard that word, I thought... Um, I was at a restaurant and they were asking me if I was alone to eat. And being Colombian and being from New York, me and my friends, when we had dinner parties, we wouldn't, we, we would eat dinner and we would have a line for dessert. Oh, now I get the <laughs> joke. That's why it rang so much with me. Would you, are you a line? Single oh, is yes. good, but a line is better. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. And I'm not condoning drug abuse, just don't condone drug abuse, but no, you do but condone just. drugs. <laughs> just drugs is fine. Abuse is bad. <laughs> it's all it's the abuse that's the problem. Yeah. Drugs are totally fine. Um, it's just, just when you cross that line, that yeah. line, a different line. Before that, my first solo show was called Suitcase Stability. And it was all about my jobs as a dominatrix, a fetish fetish model, and uh, New York City, my lovers and jobs, and nice. how every time something went wrong, I would just pack a suitcase and start up again, and that was where my stability was maintained. So perfect, perfect. Um, and then I've taken two shows to Fringe, which was Pussy Power Protest. Good name. Thank you. And that was with Carmen Sharim, Ducky Larange, and myself. And Crystal Tassels, mwah, 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 mwah. see you soon. I know you're going to be here. And that was a, co a collaboration with everybody had kind of their own solo spot, but we also had sketches that crossed over together mm -hmm. and a few songs and like some dance numbers, a little more cabaret. -y. Nice. Yeah. And why did you do that? So you did, was that in? That was in French, uh, Edinburgh. Oh, so you went to it. What, so what year was that? That was before the pandemic. The one right before the pandemic. Okay. Yes, because that was right after my friend died, my best friend, my my um, my guardian angel, who's now even more of a guardian angel. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, so I was there in deep grief because it was very recent, and oh, instead of cancelling nice. the trip, because he was one of my greatest um, patrons to the arts, to my life as an artist, and I knew that cancelling would not be what he would have wanted. Plus, uh, I kind of like to perform when I'm in a tragic state. Oh yeah, it's I feel like it's. <laughs> Giving it all. Oh, you were laughing at me and I'm so sad inside. <laughs> um, yeah. And before that, my first Fringe was, I think, maybe two years before that. And it was with Full Moon Cabaret. Nice. And we were a big cabaret show and I wore a pussy hat. Beautiful. Oh, my God, you just reminded me. I did, I did another Edinburgh show, but it was a flop. Where you were in a pussy hat? No, I don't know why the pussy hat <laughs> reminded me. that make you remember? Something about, no, I just... <laughs> I, I, I forgot a whole year then. I blanked out a whole year because it was a disaster. Mm. I did one year that was really bad. Yeah. Disaster. I mean, French is exhausting and quite amazing, but also, wow, like, you yeah. need a vacation from that when you're done. Oh, yeah, and you get ill halfway through and all the bars are open until five in the morning. And you're like, I'm going to... And you want to see every show and yeah. then, then you end up seeing the wrong show. And you're like, I saw this one. I should have seen that one. I think I did one year, but I didn't see any other shows. I was so egotistically self-obsessed with myself and drinking. Mm. I drank a lot. Mm. that I never saw a show. Terry's Best not year. drinking now. <laughs> I'm sober these days. No, I'm, quite, I'm, I've, I'm, I'm on a path. Um, I'm sober. All I do is spend my money on latex. I mean, I am addicted to latex. I was thinking of getting some today. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, latex is a healthy obsession, isn't it? It can be, if you drink enough, <laughs> if you drink enough water. If you're like oh. dehydrated in a corner, like a dry iguana. 
Have you ever done that where you, I've done it where I've like worn a cat suit in a club and then at the end of the night just kind of go, I haven't peed all night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's just sweated out. <laughs> or your or once, sweat smells like pee. <laughs> once I remember this, I mean, this is a bit grim, but I was like wearing a full cat suit. I bit, had a whole night out, super sweaty to the point where it was a heat wave and that one day was like it wasn't hot, so I was like, oh, I can get away wearing the catsuit. And then the club was still like, had like the heat from the, the heat wave burning up. And all night I had this like trickle of sweat running down my sleeve, <laughs> just coming out and just having kind this of like disgusting. long thing. <laughs> and at the end of the night, I was trying to kind of take this thing off. And as I kind of pulled it down, it was like I was a fountain. All this sweat kind of went <laughs> <laughs> all over. Quite a few people who were near me. It's so sensory. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I've made some friends. <laughs> <laughs> I um, remember having my first pair of latex uh, thigh-high stockings. Mm. And they're really difficult to put on. They're very hard. They're really difficult to put on. And then you had all this air at the end. And I was walking and little by little, the water would just accumulate in my foot. Mm. And so it was like, I felt really dangerous. Because you're kind of slipping. Even though you're not, you're in your yeah, shoes. You're in your shoes, so you, but, but you're but, slipping inside them. And you're 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 feeling your head yeah. goes. I'm falling over. It's yeah. like, well, actually, I'm not. But I, uh, yeah. So then I learned from another domino that you just cut a little triangle like a peekaboo, and then the water, and you know, you wear open toe shoes, and the water just like slides out your foot. But you just sit there, and there's just like. Pfft. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Fountains. <laughs> foot fetish is just a little bit you different. Put, you could put a food, kind of food dye in it, so you just kind of get like, just like, <laughs> just just blue, bright blue. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Sit in a room with a black light. That's kind of scary. Yeah, you just from never, all the other things. I never, <laughs> never, <laughs> no, no black light, thank never you. Never sit in a room with a black light. <laughs> Not in one of these clubs. <laughs> uh, ooh, <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> We've been there. Oh, wow. Great. Um, Terry, we hope that you are, have a chance to submit a video for us to share from your work. It could be a cartoon. It could yeah. be a, a thing because we're going to insert that video here. Now. I guess I'm around 15. It's summer. I'm at the local outdoor swimming pool, awkwardly waiting out puberty. On the other side of the pool is a girl from school I fancy. She smiles. If I swim to her, I know we'll be together. Only a width separates this potential love but I'm not the world's best swimmer. I bomb in and pump my spindly arms, flap my lanky legs, and cough chloride into my nerdy lungs. I look up, hoping to see her cheering me on, but something grabs my body. I don't know how, but there's definitely a shark in here, except actually, it's the only thing worse than a shark. It's a lifeguard rescuing me. I protest, but I'm being dragged back to my side of the pool, away from her. Everyone I've ever known is staring at me, and I have to use the ladder to get out. I look over, but she's gone. Uh, if you enjoyed the video that Cherry shared with us, please check out the links below to uh, his work. Also, follow us, like, share, subscribe. The more that you communicate with us, the better we know which direction to take this wonderful experience. And uh, we're back. <laughs> My second question to you is, with all the life experiences and changes and now being more honest with yourself about kink or just like lifestyles, the older we get, the more we know ourselves, even if we're constantly questioning things. What advice would you give your younger self? Oh. <gasps> Get better haircuts. <laughs> Get, are you getting better haircuts in Berlin? I mean, uh, no, I've, I've peaked. I, had, I was getting good expensive haircuts before I left London. Now I'm cutting my own hair. I find so. it very hard to find good haircuts here. Well, it's just like everything. They, they exist, but you've got to go to Mitte. So why would you? <laughs> you've got to go to Mitte. Um, I love Mitte. I'm, I'm, I don't. I, I, when I think of Mitte, I just think of... Alexander Platz. Mm, when I think of Mitte, I think money. Yeah, I don't think I've been to the fancy. Because it feels busy, like it feels like money's moving around, like it's in the flow, like yeah, yeah, yeah. people are, you know. Uh, I feel like when I'm in Mitte, the people who tell me that they have a job, I believe them. <laughs> <laughs> Versus like, no, Karen, they're like, I have a job. I'm like, yeah, sure you do. Yeah. You have a studio, you? probably do have you? like seven jobs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> able to survive. Well, you live in your studio, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, haircuts, good. I would also say to my older self, don't wear that jumper. Actually, what well, no, the cl clothes in general. Don't wear that jumper? Well, I just, so, Wait. as a personal story, so when I was about 19, I was, so my sexuality is a, 
I, I came out as gay when I was about 16. Then I kind of went back in a bit a couple of years later when I was like, like why, do I, why, do, why do I fancy women? And I was wearing camp clothes in my hometown. I was wearing PVC and crazy stuff. And I got, oh, yeah. That's a toy. That's a, <laughs> I was like, hey, I like the sound of this guy. And um, I, got, I got beaten up when I was, yeah, you, I made that dramatic. You got I, beaten up. I got up. beaten up by some people that lived on the estate I grew, I grew up on. And it knocked like the style What out does of it me. mean when you say you grew up on an estate? Like in a kind of council, like, a, I don't know what you'd call it in other languages, like, you know, poor, I was from a poor part of town, like poor. Estate sounds like rich. No, no, a council estate is like <laughs> high rise block of flats and, Oh, you're you know, talking like projects. Projects, the United projects. United States, it's projects. Yeah, I was coming estate from the projects. Estate is like, oh, I'm going over to my aunt's estate. Yeah, no, I'm going to go to the estate. So that's going, my British well, accent. I could tell, oh, that, that was like my is. aunt, that had like my nana. No. Um, <laughs> No, in a state, I, we weren't shooting grouse and pheasant. No, this was more like shooting up in, in the stairwell kind of thing. And yeah, so I got beaten up and it knocked the style out of me. Because oh, I was so sad. scared. Because to, you were, yeah. Yeah, and so for years, and especially when I moved to, if I look, if I look at, so my comedy career was like 10 years long. And one day I decided to kind of catalog it on my website and be like, yeah, I've done this 10 years of comedy. And I basically wore the same t-shirt for 10 years. That's <laughs> And that's when you're like, I need to step it up. Yeah, so that I'm is... going to quit comedy and I'm going to bring back colorful outfits. Exactly. I'm going to wear things again. So I just, so if I look at that kind of period of my 20s, it's just this kind of, I could see that I was a very shy person. I was hiding a lot of stuff. I was mm. not, uh, I wasn't I mean, really a, feeling a, it. a physical attack will create yeah. a major reaction. For sure. yeah. yeah. And it was only really moving to Berlin that I was like, do you know what? I'm going to wear this shit again. And I mean, but Berlin fashion, it's, it's. Well, you can do what you can. Where, where? I think you can get away with anything here, which is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but is but, it fashion? Well, exactly. I mean, there's definitely pockets of fashion. Like the club scene has a huge fashion style. Yes, yes. Um, but sometimes you can see. There's things. a lot of also. Hey, I decided not to do laundry. This is what I've got. Yeah, left. yeah, yeah. This is. I'm wearing that thing. That <laughs> thing I found. What I'm wearing today is from Pansy Presents, uh, and they designed this T-shirt to support many wonderful collectives in the queer community in Berlin, and they're still Perfect. selling them because they're moving apartments because somebody bought their building and they're being forced out. So yeah. if you want a Pansy Presents t-shirt, check out their website and get a little support to one of our greatest drag queens in Berlin. Hmm. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, it happens, right? I like it, but I don't like the reason he's got to sell more shirts. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that, that's the bad thing. So it's good. It's good. Yeah. I do like the, the club fashion here and like the chunky clothing and the liberated, like the colorfulness and also, I don't enjoy the hair culture, but I do like the freedom of it. The hair culture. You know what I mean, body hair. Oh, oh, do you? I didn't think that's what you meant at all. So why? <laughs> did you do because it's very okay here and I enjoy that it is. It allows me to relax. But you prefer? But I'm not gonna have hairy armpits. Oh. I'm not gonna be one of those people that's just like, what's up? I don't know. I. I... I quite like the hairy armpit. Uh, uh, or just one. Maybe if everyone, just one. if everyone just had one hairy and one waxed, <laughs> and you can just take I mean, I can understand the fetishization of that or, or the reason behind it and the, like, the sensation that it brings up in a more yeah. sexual aspect. Yeah. But I don't... It's just I didn't grow up in that culture. I grew up with, you know, body hair shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up with like, a las mujeres picotudas, de lejos se saludan, which is what we would say in Spanish, like women who are, have a, a, beard, a, a hairy upper lip, you say hello from far away. Oh. It rhymes in Spanish though. I know, but um, imagine that. <laughs> but uh, I love the, like I, Frida Kahlo for me is, mm -hmm. you know, a beautiful example of beauty that, that, uh, that has hair and that embraces it. But uh, yeah, but I do see, you know, like some of my friends are like, oh my God, my legs are not hairy enough. And I'm like, oh, great for you. <laughs> like, oh. So how, how, but do you ever try? Do you ever try just to go, I'm going to. I let, I let, I let it grow in, but not, no, 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 not to that point. No. So you have a point where it just, it repulses you. Is that yeah. the thing? Yeah. yeah. When. And uh, the same with nails. When my, when my fingernails get to a length, it doesn't matter. See? I'm done. Oh, yeah, but it's kind of creepy when guys have long nails. Unless oh, yeah. they have a guitar in their hand all the time. You have to have a guitar in your hand to have that creepy long nail. 
Oh, those guys that have the one long nail. That's even creepier. Oh, yeah. uh, I know that. That guy. Apologies like, if anyone's got the one that, long nail, but it doesn't. That do. guy's a, what is it like a a, a ketamine priest or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> one long nail. He's a ketamine priest. <laughs> but in my drug days, I'd be like going, oh. Have you got have you got ketamine? <laughs> You're like, oh, give me that long yeah. nail. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I just hang out with the guy with the one long nail. Oh, he's my friend. <laughs> he's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> we need to introduce you to better friends. <laughs> no. Yeah. There's boundaries. <laughs> um, we've all had a friend with one long nail. Yeah, Nady Neil. <laughs> <laughs> so the advice you would give your younger self is dress better? Don't give up on clothing. That's quite shallow, isn't it? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I know you made a second. I feel like, no, I feel there's a, there's a deeper message there of be yourself more, don't be scared, do things, but also that jumper is fucking terrible, Terry. So just if old Terry is watching this, why did you wear that kind of green and brown jumper all that time? Just, it was like a Christmas present from your mother and just, Aww. no. <laughs> Sounds like you were attached to that jumper. I just didn't know that you could wear other things. Huh? Honestly, I'm so weird. <laughs> Did you go to private school with a uniform? Yeah, no, I didn't go to private school. I went to a Catholic school. but I, They I had was, a uniform. Yeah, but I went to a Catholic school and I wasn't Catholic. I was the only non-Catholic in the Catholic school, which somehow fucked you up more than being a Catholic. What were you? I was just nothing. And your mom put you in a Catholic school? Yeah, she was like, it's the nearest school. Oh, okay. And that I was makes like, sense. okay, great. And then the first day I got there, they had a mass and a bishop came around. And I was like, what the fuck is it? Is this senior school? Is this what happens? And everyone's like taking the bread from this guy. And then someone says to me, you can't take the bread from him because you've not been confirmed. I didn't know what that no, meant. No, you haven't done your communion. Yeah, but I didn't know what being confirmed meant. Confirmed so I, is later on. You yeah, need to do your first communion. But then they were just like, you've got to be confirmed. And everyone's going no. like, oh, we, we were getting confirmed. You've got, you got to have your first communion. Yeah, I don't know what this is. And then I was like, what does confirmed mean? Is it confirmed is what? when you're older and you've already been taking the, the bread of Christ. And then you say, I'm an adult now and I want to confirm this, which I've never been confirmed because I did not. Well, there you go. Do not was, confirm uh, but, that. So I was just like some kind of heathen in the room, and they're all just going, oh, I'm not worthy to Jesus, I'm not worthy. And I'm Did just they call like, you the uh, white devil? No, they just ignored me. <laughs> just like, who's this guy in the corner? And then I could go, I remember vividly, I could go to the bishop, but I wasn't allowed to take the bread. So I had to, he had So to, you had to make the line anyway? Yeah, yeah, and they, they make me go, and they'd just be like... And they're like, you don't get no wine. Yeah, and I had to like put my hands across, like I'm in a kind of dance video. And, and that, meant, <laughs> that meant he knew the sign was so he could... I am not confirmed. He, he could bop me on the head so that he just like bless me, but not give me the bread. Mm. And then one day, I was just like... So they were like, he gets to participate. <laughs> yeah, oh, bless him. So one day, I went to get the bread. I just thought, oh, fuck it, I'm going to take the bread. And I thought the whole world was going to collapse, but... Did you? You were like that. Yeah, yeah. 9-11. <laughs> 9-11. That was on 9 No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you guys. I was there. <laughs> I was there in my Brooklyn apartment looking at it going, some, some British guy just took the, <laughs> just took the bread of Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He should have had his arms across his chest. <laughs> Vampire walk to the altar, okay? <laughs> Actually, you know, 9-11 was the day that I moved to London and I had no idea on the news and I just kind of got to London, it was deserted. And I was like, I thought this place would be busier. <laughs> and, yeah. Why was it deserted? It didn't happen in London. Because everyone thought it was going to happen there next. You might not realise, but at the time, we were, you know, we were quite thinking, OK, well, whatever happens in America happens to us next. Oh, you guys are so self-centred. We had 7-7 seven, seven bombing. We had a bombing later. I later? Well. Not yeah. on 9-11. Right, fine. We can't have one terrorist attack. You, you, you had it, it's fine. I was there and I remember being very Colombian about it. What does that even mean? That means just that... Just shaving your legs. <laughs> so like... I just started waxing my legs. <laughs> my uh, God, I can't be seen no, like this. I just <laughs> immediately had a like, survival tactic. Um, in, 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 like, boom, I was like, okay, call my weed dealer, go to the supermarket, find out where my friends are, let's go barbecue. What? I don't think it's... <laughs> what? Whoa. Barbecue, I volunteered that's... afterwards, but for the first two days when we weren't sure what to do, we just all collected all the Colombians that we knew. One of them was a Michelin star chef, and we ate and smoked a lot of weed. I'm just not sure if a barbecue is very sensitive and to the And then we moment. also, well, I mean, it was, 
September. <laughs> um, but we also were <laughs> kind of sh not shocked, but we were in disbelief at how much people from the United States couldn't believe that something like that was happening to them. And it was like, this yeah. happens all around the world. This happens in so many societies. Not that it's okay, but we were just like, wow. Like, they're like, oh. we were like, you know, they were shocked that there was sort of military police all around the city. And mm -hmm. when you're, you know, when you grow up in certain countries, there's military police everywhere. Not that that's a good thing, but you're a little bit more accustomed to that yeah. uh, visual, which I mean, it always scares me because why should why should you have long distance rifles in a city? I mean, I've always said this. That's what my tattoo says. <laughs> That's what my tattoo says. <laughs> it's across my chest. Why should you have long distance rifles in a city? <laughs> yeah, it's um, covered with the hair. Yeah, I was actually getting ready for my first day at a new job. I was really excited. What was the job? Um, I was working at Dramatics Hair Salon NYC. My name was Tango. Um, I was managing a hair salon and it was my first day, like receptionist slash manager. And uh, I was getting ready. I always used to smoke a joint in the morning and listen to a song and like dance around. And I walked out of my apartment and my downstairs neighbor, who was a DJ, he comes out of his apartment. He's like, woman, where do you think you're going? And I was like, I'm going to work. It's my first day. You know, I'm 24, 20, wow. yeah, something like that. 25, 24. And, um, and he was like, don't you hear the helicopters? Haven't you listened to the news? Don't you turn on the television? I was like, no. <laughs> and he's like, we're under attack. You don't have a job today. We don't even, like, he just started flipping out. And so I went to the roof of my brownstone in Brooklyn. Wow. And I saw what was happening. And I was like, huh, oh. marijuana? Okay, I went directly to the supermarket, bought everything that I could buy, and then checked on my friends, and we all met up. Sounds good. And then, you, you, then you, figured out like a plan. You, you make it sound like quite a nice day. <laughs> it was actually a, a really beautiful day outside time. of like weather-wise and like the colors. And I, I have a very strong visual of the color of the sky and what was happening. Because it was just a clear blue sky yeah. that day, wasn't it? Interesting. Yeah. Wow. And then going to manage a hair salon after that was quite weird because, you know, people were getting haircuts in trauma. <laughs> they were like, can you give me bangs? <laughs> <laughs> but quietly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, great. <laughs> people like Man 11, I don't know. What? Um, let's move forward to the future. <laughs> okay. How about that? What is, um, what's Terry's potential? What, what does Terry want to create? What <laughs> art do you want to create in the world? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> future? Well, I'm thinking, my plan now is to do, I'm going to call it one last show. A time I'm, to shine? Because I'm dramatic. Well, not the time to shine, but I'm with like, well, I'm going to do one more solo show, maybe go to Edinburgh once. One more. last show again. Again, yeah. yeah one, <laughs> one. Just, you know, just do one last show. For, but I'm, I think one last big written show with a story, but this time all about King with lots of animation. Because I've been doing much more kind of design stuff in the last 10 years. I love so it. The stuff I used to draw on stage was very childish, but now I've got, now I've got skills. So I'm going to do one last big thing i want to do a big berlin show with djs and make it like a kind of club atmosphere but also telling the story of fetish clubs and kink I'm and coming out. yeah i'm and coming. kind of my story and have you know just have lots of latex and just have people in the audience in latex and then Sounds go to a party gorgeous i just want to go to a party that's the just thing have a whole bunch of squeaky people in the audience <laughs> yeah i can hear them laughing because <laughs> and yeah i just want an excuse for a big after party and I reckon, I reckon actually... Birthdays don't do it. <laughs> I hate, I've got a January birthday. It's the, I hate birthdays. Mm. January birthday is when someone goes, oh... oh when everyone's broke. We're like, we already yeah. gave our children everything. Yeah, I'm not drinking. I, I won't come because I'm really skinned. Whereas people who've got a July birthday, when's your birthday? June. Yeah, you see, I hate you people. You've grown up with like summer birthdays and barbecues. My and birthday everything. has, I cry every single year. I have never, I, I have to check my phone. I'm so sorry, everyone. It's in my pussy. Is it buzzing? <laughs> it's buzzing. <laughs> and it could be the next, nope, nobody matters. It's just your alarm. Just right back in. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, guys. It's just in case there's an artist waiting in the rain. <laughs> I was waiting in the rain. I'm sorry, I, I didn't have it by the rain. I was trying to buzz I didn't put it in my pussy then, I was charging it. Oh, great. <laughs> Do you know what? If I had a pound for every time I heard that, <laughs> I'd have a pound. <laughs> so future Terry would like to create another last 
One man show. Yeah. Great. Let's and make this happen. And a novel. A novel. I do see you writing a novel. I try to write a novel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, but I see you successfully. <laughs> Oh, that means actually doing the work, though, doesn't it? That means it? finishing it. <laughs> there's, a, uh, there's an old British comedian called Peter Cook, and he had this great line that if someone said, I'm writing a novel, he'd reply, neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said, I see you finishing it. Would you self-publish? Never. Never? Why I not? I need validation. I need the big people to say I'm great. Otherwise, <laughs> you what's are the point? worthy. Yeah, what's the point in doing something yourself when someone else can say you're great? Hmm. Because they could, yeah, no, I don't know. I guess you work well with others. <laughs> Yeah, I just, you know, I, I just, I, I, what's this, I can't, I can't be self-promoting. No, it's a lot of work. I hate But nowadays hate everybody's myself. self-promoting. The yeah. whole entire internet destroyed what it was to have someone represent you, promote you. I want to be taken for, to dinner with an agent who says, oh my God, this is going to blow up, you're amazing. And then it gets put on expenses. I don't even care about the novel. I just want the dinner. <laughs> I just want to go to a nice restaurant in Mitter. I just want Can somebody just to tell to... me I'm worthy. <laughs> just please say you like me. Just say I'm, a, say I'm a success. That's all I want. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, everyone. This is Terry Saunders. I'm depressed now. <laughs> I'm Liliana Velasquez. Well, we are slippery people. You've gotten a chance to see the Winton Nikos in this episode. We're here at Wave Dot Studio. Please like, subscribe, share our wonderful series and comment below. Let us know what artists you like, what questions you have, and we will see you next week. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs>